So now that we know how to define a redox reaction, the first thing we need to do is define, um, or we need to assign some oxidation states. So an oxidation state is something like a charge. So it's sort of like a charge. And, you know, we, we, we've dealt with charges like when we did um, ions and, you know, uh, compounds, but it's going to get a little bit more complicated than that. Every um, element that's going to be in one of these equations is going to be assigned an oxidation number. So charge is just to kind of help you. But the rules are, and you need to know these because I won't give them to you, okay? Free elements are zero. They have no charge. They exist. So, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about an atomic element or a molecular element. They have no charge. So, it's zero. If you have a monoatomic ion, so like a metal like calcium plus two or um, iron plus three, things like that. So, if it's a monoatomic ion, so one atom by itself that has a charge, its oxidation number is the same as its charge. Now, what happens when we don't have just an element what ha or, or an ion? What happens if we have a compound or something else? Well, similarly to when we did ionic compounds, if you have a neutral compound, so like an ion there, we said we did charge balance, so all of them add up to equal zero in a neutral compound. Now, oxidation states, we also assign these for uh, molecular compounds, which we would normally not, we would name using prefix system. So even if you're using, if you have two nonmetals, if it's neutral, it's going to be, the sum of them adds up to be zero. If you have a polyatomic ion, all the oxidation states add up to equal the overall net charge. I know this can get, sound very confusing, but we're going to practice this and it'll get a little bit better. Metals, remember where metals are on the periodic table, they're everything to the left of the stairs. Metals always have positive oxidation states, because remember metals always lose electrons. And then non-metals you kind of have to use a process of elimination. So you don't always use the numbers that are at the top of the chart. Now you have this table, don't memorize this table, I will give it to you, okay? You gotta know the rules, but I'll give you the table. Now on the table, you start at the top and you work your way down. So the first thing, because the higher up on the table it is, the more priority it has. So if, if any of your compounds in the equation have fluorine, you find the fluorine and you put a negative one charge on it. So that's, that's the number you put above it. If you have hydrogen anywhere in the table, it's going to be plus one. If you have oxygen, it's going to be minus one. Now if you have something that has fluorine and oxygen, fluorine gets the priority and you have to figure out mathematically what oxygen is. We'll try some of these, so don't worry. All right, 7A, these are going to be your halogens. So um, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So this is every, all your other halogens besides fluorine. This is the, uh, the row to the left of the halogens, so it has oxygen and sulfur. And then um, 5A, this is nitrogen and phosphorus. But you may not get far enough down on this table. So... These are the rules. The higher up on the table it is, the, the more priority it has. So if you had something that had fluorine and um, nitrogen, fluorine gets the negative one. You have to figure out what nitrogen is because it might not be minus three. In fact, that happens a lot. Um, so those are the rules. I'll give you the table, learn the rules, and let's give this a try.